Hello again. The Phoenix Greenways Walk 11 Five Pits Trail Day 2 Monday the 21st of November 2011 And it's time we went out and made a start at getting back the photos I lost earlier on. And to do this we need to hit the good old Five Pits Trail once again. Now the weather's not brilliant, but it's okay. So why not? Trouble is, with one thing and another, it's already early in the afternoon, so there's just not enough time to do it all, so we'll just have to do a bit of it. So I decide I'm going to park in the Hardstoft Road car park at Pillsley, where the trail crosses the road and walk from there to the start or end point at Tibshelf Ponds, and back again. That'll do us for today, and we'll do the next section another time. I make the usual necessary preparations, put no names up into the Trekker mobile, and get going. Around 2pm and we're parking up at Hardstoff Road car park on the Five Pits Trail. Of course, no names requires no encouragement at all to leap out of the car. Second I lift the hatchback, drags his lead along the ground, cocks his leg on the first stationary thing he finds, and barks profusely at an elderly couple who are enjoying a leisurely afternoon stroll. Or at least they were till no names confronted them. Much apologies ensue and a telling off for no names. Just be told by the elderly gentleman, he's alright, he's only doing his job. Anyhow, they're going in the opposite direction to our intended route, and we soon leave them behind, as I slip no names lead and we wander off down the gradual incline in the general direction of Tip Shelf. Within five minutes, we've come across a woodland plantation on the right hand side of the trail where has been erected a plaque and directional sign remembering Tom Hullard. No, I don't know who he is either, so I'd better read the plaque. The Tom Hullard Mile. Tom Hullard, tip shelf athlete. Came third in Roger Bannister's first sub four minute mile at Oxford on the 6th of May 1954. Opened on 6th of May 2004 with a directional sign that reads Tom Hullett's Mile, Tip Shelf, 1760 yards, May 2004. Oh, so that's how many yards there are to a mile, I take it. And good for Tom, you learn something new every day. About 20 minutes later, the sheep grazing in a field alongside suddenly become more alert as we pass by. And although they virtually ignore me, they do on the other hand keep a very wary eye on no names the whole time. I guess they may have had trouble with dogs at some point, but fortunately for them, this time, no names is not one for annoying sheep as he pads along exploring, totally unaware that hundreds of eyes are on him, and totally blanks them. Ignorance can be bliss. The trail then passes downhill with a field to the right and a large mature hedgerow to the left skirting yet more fields. Now little do I know at this point that this same hedgerow will reap a pleasant little harvest on our return journey. Well soon after this we are confronted with what is the steepest incline on this section of the trail and a little burst of extra energy is needed for the ascent. On completing the climb, the trail levels off before the next ascent up to the road crossing at Tibshelf Common. Here we find another Tom Hullett memorial and directional sign, obviously the end of his famous mile, and the directional sign now reading Tom Hullett's mile, Pillsley, 1760 yards, 6th of May 2004. A few hundred yards later and I need to put the lead on no names to cross the road. I call him to me and he pads up and stands there patiently as I clip on his lead. He knows the rules, bless him. After crossing the road, I release no names again and our route then descends towards Tibshelf Ponds. And I spot an interesting feature along the way. The local authority has designated an area for the sole use of our equestrian friends to allow their horses a good old gallop as opposed to the usual rule on the trails of horses walk and trot only. They've called it Station Gallop, so I'm assuming that we are now passing where Tibshelf Railway Station once stood. 
A few yards later and everything now opens up into quite a substantial area of grass surrounded by woodland. And No Names makes the most of this new opportunity to do his mental dog run around routine, a characteristic of his that always brings a smile to my face. Well soon we catch a glimpse of our first sighting of Tibshell Pond from a strategically placed bench which allows anyone to make the most of the relaxing view. I've decided to continue onward to the end point where the Five Pitch Trail connects with the Silver Hill Trail and explore the ponds a little during our return. Just after 3pm we finally come to what is effectively the end, or the start, of the Five Pitch Trail. So it's taken us about one hour to get here from Hardstoff Road at Pearlsley. About an hour to return to the car will be needed, but I want to have a better look at Tivshell Ponds first, but no worries as we've got plenty of time. It don't get dark till about 4.30 or 5pm. Tivshell Ponds proves to be an excellent photo opportunity, and anglers are enjoying a reasonably pleasant afternoon's fishing as I snap away happily at almost everything I see. A long conversation with one of the caretakers of the angling club confirms my earlier assumption about the once location of Tivshelf Railway Station. The pleasant gentleman is obviously a bit of a train fan and proceeds to tell me about almost all of the former railways and their stations within a seven mile radius of our current location, with plenty of references to the local collieries also. Lots of great useful information, brilliant. I tell him about the walks No Names and I take in the area and about my blog site and contact information is soon exchanged as we vow to get together over a cup of some time and talk some more. Excellent. What astounds me and pleases me most of all is that all the different people No Names and I have met on our walks in Chatter 2 have all been most helpful, well mannered and very pleasant. This always gives me more inspiration and desire to continue regardless of any personal issues or bad days. It makes me feel all the more that with these walks I am doing something useful in my spare time and most enjoyable too. Anyway, time is passing and as much as I'd love to continue my conversation with the caretaker we must be pressing on in order to get back to Harstoff Road before dark. As we leave I notice a parking area especially tailored for horse boxes and other local authority initiative to help our equestrian friends. Nice. About 3.50pm and we have once again come to the road crossing at Tibshelf Common on our return journey. About 10 minutes later in the hedgerow near to the sheep we met earlier I have spotted something. Something I hadn't noticed on the outward journey. But that's probably because my mind was set on reaching the end or start and tip shelf ponds before relaxing a bit. My thought at the moment? Wow, is that breakfast I see before me? I scramble through the edge row and undergrow for a closer look. Parasol mushrooms, nice. Just enough to go with my bacon and eggs in the morning. So I promptly pick the younger ones, they do taste better, and put them in a small food bag several of which I always carry for such occasions. Well, no names and I finally arrive back at the Trekmobile in Hardstoff Road car park at about quarter past five. Having enjoyed a most excellent and rewar rewarding afternoon stroll on the famous Five Pits Trail of the Phoenix Greenways. The mushrooms? I fried them in a little butter and yes they were absolutely delicious. Now then, warning Important information. Please listen carefully. Please be very, very careful when foraging for wild mushrooms. They are not always what they appear to be, and some can be very poisonous. In all cases, it is very important that you are 100% sure that the mushrooms you have gathered are safe to eat. If you are not 100% sure, without a shadow of a doubt, then leave them well alone. Also, always wash wildly foraged food thoroughly before use. If you think you have found parasol mushrooms, scratch the stalk with a fingernail or small blade. The wound will change to an orange brown colour, which is quite obvious on the pale stalk. Now if it does not change colour this way, then what you have found is not parasol mushrooms. 
Now in the case of parasol mushrooms you must cook them thoroughly before eating. Never eat them raw because they can be toxic to some people if eaten raw. The cooking process actually kills all the toxins, destroys all the toxins as long as they're cooked thoroughly. So there you go. And of course as usual, you can see all the pictures of this walk at Trail Trekking on Facebook. Thank you very much. Bye bye.